So you may know about this Pittsburgh father because he is being called a hero for really a simple act of kindness. Howie Dittman attended the Pittsburgh Pride Parade this month and he offered free hugs. And the response was overwhelming, more than 700 hugs in two and a half hours. And Howie Dittman is with me now. Howie, thank you so much for being here. Happy Father's Day to you, first no, of all. No, thank you, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So you were offering free dad hugs at the Pride Parade. Yes. Um, I want to show some of the pictures here, a couple of the pictures, because I want to get right to um, a couple of things you shared that really struck you. This picture of you with, with a woman, I think it was the first woman you said that came up to you. What was that, what was that like? What was that about? Well, I traveled down there with uh, my friend Denna Hayes, and she was with the organization uh, freemomhugs.org. And um, when I had seen her RSVP on Facebook to the event, my first thought was, well, you know, if you had 100 moms and 100 dads, uh, presented with a child that identified with this population, you know, my, my thought was, my assumption was that the moms overall would likely be more accepting, so possibly dad hugs could be even more needed. And um, so just grabbed the shirt online and went down with Denna, and was, the parade hadn't started yet. Everything was, you know, a joyous festival and things like that. And I turned around and there's this young woman just with tears in her eyes, and uh, she threw her arms around me and thank me and thank me and thank me. And, you know, obviously I wasn't gonna be the one to let go first. Um, but that's when I realized that even though we headed down there to, you know, spread some joy and have some smiles and things like that, that it was maybe gonna turn out a little bit differently. So she was, she was kind of tearing up when she saw you. Was it the, the hugs from dad? Yeah, kind of? yeah, she told, she told me even then that she was, had been across the street and was just you know, going about her day, having a good time, and she saw the shirt and ran across the street because she just instantly needed, you know, it, it threw a switch or, you know, what, however you want to phrase it, but it struck her, you know, from being in this joyous, again, this joyous festival kind of thing to, mm -hmm. um, you know, just needing, needing a dad hug, I suppose. So. Let's talk about the uh, gentleman that you mm -hmm. put a picture up of on your Facebook page as well. This one, mm -hmm. Uh, resonated with you too. What did he tell you? Did, are these people talking to you? Are they telling you stories about themselves and why this is important to them? Or is the hug enough? The, for, for that gentleman, um, he's almost 50 now. Um, and he just cried and cried and cried. And again, you know, I didn't know his story at the time. And he actually shared with Denna uh, after we had um, uh, ended uh, the hug that that it, he was 19 when his parents found out and excommunicated him and uh it's so that it was almost 30 years and he hadn't heard from his parents and you know there's been no contact and i remember him coming down the street where he was you know singing and everyone's having a blast and he's again just in the middle of this festival this great parade and then he saw the shirt and you know it's just broke breaking people down and it, w it was heartbreaking honestly how many uh, there was a mix. There were joyous ones, of course, but um, and there were ones though that were just they held on a little bit longer, and you could feel them, you know, reacting and starting to cry and, and things like that. It's and pretty, after this, I know it, it struck you so much that you actually put mm -hmm. it on your Facebook page. I want to read something that you wrote. You you mm -hmm. put these pictures up and said, "Imagine that, parents. Imagine that your child feels so lost from you." that they sink into the arms of a complete stranger and sob endlessly just because that stranger is wearing a t-shirt offering hugs from a dad. Think yeah. of the depths of their pain. Try to imagine how deep those cuts must be. Please don't be the parent of a child that has to shoulder that burden. Have you heard from any parents? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've heard from uh, everyone, I think. But, um, you know, some of them are, you know, there's a lot that are, are thanking me um, a lot that had supportive parents, but their partner didn't, um, or their friend didn't, or they themselves obviously didn't. Um, I've heard from parents uh, that have told me they've been crying for days and that they were that parent, and that now they've reached out to try to reconcile, to ask for forgiveness, and to try to reestablish uh, with their child. I've heard from children of those parents of all ages that have you know, received that call and said, I haven't heard from my parents in five years or ten years and you know this morning I did and they want to have lunch you know things like that wow. um, 
That's a moment, Howie. That yeah. is a moment to realize that <laughs> yeah. what you did actually brought people back together. I only have about 30 seconds, but I want to yeah, ask sure. how this changed you. I'm sorry? How did this change you? Um, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's just kind of what we do. I have an organization called Helping Butler County that we just try to identify needs in the community and fill those needs. And we don't start with labels or end with labels. We just try to do good human things. Um, so um, it definitely is impactful. I mean, I can't, I can't deny that in any way, shape, or form. I mean, um, it's, you know, I'm looking forward to next year's parade for <laughs> sure. But in between, we've got a lot of work to do.